morning, everyone. today, so just hang in there for a few minutes. We'll be getting back into chapter five. see it, just let me know. You should see it now. Give everybody about five minutes to get here. Get myself on mute. Again, so anybody wants to listen to this later, they can. Anybody else has any questions, um, you can unmute yourself or send me a chat. Hopefully, I'll see you. Everybody's doing well. I think we're going to get started. Um, I sent out an email yesterday and I put it in our announcements for our class that there's a new calendar. Um, matter of fact, let me make sure you can see it. I have it. There we go. And um, this is in Learn under uh, course information. It's the very first file. You should see it. And it's just outlining due dates, lecture dates um, for the rest of the semester and the plan of action, what chapters we're going to finish up. So you can see, of course, today is March 31st. And so the very first column is indicating a lecture date that we'll actually be meeting at 8 a.m. And the type of activities um, are in our next column and then the due dates if one of the activities has something with the due date. So here we have March 31st. So today we're going to finish up talking about chapter five. We may even start chapter six a little bit. But our graded problems and quiz for chapter five then will be due on April 5th. This is already updated in Connect. Um, our smart book activity for chapter six will be due Thursday morning at 8 a.m. And that's already updated in Connect. And then you can see the rest of our activities here. Um, originally, I had planned to get through chapter 11. That's not going to happen. So we're going to start, stop at chapter 10. And if you note, our test three right in here will be on chapter seven and eight. And then our final exam, which I didn't put here and I should have, but that's only going to be on chapters nine and 10. Chapters nine and 10. And that will be due the week of finals. I think that's Tuesday at 11.59 p.m. Please don't forget you should be working on your project, especially with the way the stock market has been. Uh, what a time to be working on this, but please try to be um, actively engaged in, in that process. And if anybody has any questions on that, you could email me or uh, we can set up a private meeting, okay? Are there any questions on the calendar? 
now, as Alyssa asked before, um, if there's going to be like an Easter break as originally planned. Um, in my one class, I can do that because we're in pretty good shape with our material. But for this course, we aren't going to have Thursday of next week off. We will be meeting, um, and that would be April 9th. Okay, and that's the only day we would have had off for Easter break, but because of the situation and what the material we're going to actually need. Don't forget, these are recorded and they are available in Blackboard. So if you are, you know, I don't know where you're going, but, <laughs> you know, we, we really can't go anywhere. Um, <clears throat> but if you can't make a, a lecture, I know maybe a work or a responsibility like that, that you need to go in and help out or whatever, um, just know they're recorded. Okay, doke. Um, as far as our participation grade goes, somebody asked me yesterday. Uh, it's kind of like you got it. Okay, so um, I'm not, I'm just adding those points in for any portion of our grade that was based on participation. We're in a unique format now, and that's just the way it is. Okay, some other things before we get into our material. If you haven't seen some updates from the school, they are um, taking on a lot of the same um, changes in grades as other colleges are. We aren't exactly 100% um, complete with this process, but I could tell you what's been in the, the mix. Students, uh, teachers are being told to um, give grades as we normally would. So we will determine your grade and whatever your grade ends up being at the end of the semester, A, B plus, whatever. We will enter that into the system. You, on certain courses, and they haven't defined those courses yet, will have the option as a student to go in within a week and ask for your grade to be changed to a like satisfactory grade if it's a C or better. So you wouldn't receive a letter grade if you ask the college to do this if it's a C or higher, you'll just get like a satisfactory grade. And that would indicate to a transfer institution, you earned at least a C in this class. Um, otherwise, you can also, through the end of the semester, withdraw from a class, okay? And um, they are offering, and, and we are too, incompletes more for students who have no access to internet and um, or uh, have extreme circumstances because of this whole situation. But I don't think any of our, um, I've checked us all out in our own class and we've all been pretty active and um, haven't seen any kind of issues with that. So when you see, if you go into LCC's main website too, you'll see the COVID-19 area and that explains a lot of frequently asked questions and all. So stay tuned. With hear me sorry about that stay tuned with um, what classes qualify for the satisfactory grade right now what I see is general courses like English math social science and free electives so for most of us this is a, a required course for your degree so you're in accounting or business administration some type of program that requires it so I don't see that grading applying to this class, but they haven't they haven't come back and said yes or no on that. So I'll keep you posted. Okay. And I think I think that's it. Do you have any questions on that? They haven't decided on graduation if there'll be a official commencement. I'm gonna guess no. A lot of schools are delaying them. Um, I'm not saying you'll never have a commencement if you wanted to walk, but it'll be delayed. Um, and they are still registering for fall classes. Summer is put on hold because there's some modifications occurring. So once I hear more about that, I'll let you know. But I know a lot of you are probably graduating or this is your last semester. So, but if you are looking to register for the fall, you can summer hold off on. Okay, I think I've updated you with with what I know. 
Okay, so let's get back to our material. I'm gonna get out of the Word and go back into PowerPoint. And I'm going into, I guess it's my slide 20. There we go. So hopefully you see that. Let me know if you can't. I'm looking for chats, no chats, okay. So we're gonna go and just refresh what we talked about last Thursday about calculating present value. Um, because now we're gonna take it to a, a different realm. And last week when we talked about calculating future value, so what's something worth that we invest today in the future given a certain interest rate and keeping the money invested for a certain period of time. And then we said the other, we need something in the future. So we know the dollar amount we need in the future. If it was invested for a certain period of time at a certain interest rate, how much would we have to invest today? And that's what you're really calculating with present value. What is the value today we need to invest? So we presented a formula for present value and we said that is the future value, the amount you wanna to accumulate to divided by one plus the interest rate that it would be invested at to the number of periods it would compound. That's the little t. So if we know three parts of this entire formula, we could calculate the fourth, it's algebra, right? So if we know the present value, we know the future value, we know the interest rate, we can calculate how many periods. If we know the present value, if we know the future value, if we know the number of periods, we can calculate the interest rate. So this next section of our chapter focuses on these kind of calculations. Now, if you have your little financial calculator, this is a great thing because it's very straightforward with the calculations. It's not that it's hard with the formulas, you just need to know some of the different uh, components on your calculator. And we'll walk you through that. Now, what's important, and they show us this in our last bubble here, if you're using a financial calculator, be sure to remember the sign convention or you're going to receive an error or a, an answer that doesn't make sense when solving for interest rate or number of periods. And I'll show you that again as we start going through this. So let's take a look. We have here, often we will want to know what the interest rate is on an investment. So we could rearrange our present value equation and solve for the interest rate or what we call the discount rate. So if you um, are using formulas, you want to make use of both y to the x and one over x keys. Now, I'm not too hip with that. Okay, I gotta be honest with you, but I can show you how a, a workaround if you don't know how to use those keys, which is what I do. So you are looking at an investment that will pay $1,200 in five years. So it's going to pay you $1,200 in the future. So you could write down future value, you know it's 1,200 in five years. So the number of periods it's going to be invested for, or the T is five. You can invest $1,000 today. So your present value is 1,000. What is the interest rate that it's actually um, accumulating at? So taking that present value formula we saw in the previous slide, okay, we can solve for R, the interest rate, by taking the future value divided by the present value and raising it to one divided by T power. And I'll show you how to do that, minus one. Okay, so if you know how to use your one over the X key, this, that's a shortcut to what I'm about to show you. Here's what I do. 
Now let's fill in the formula. Future value 1,200. Divide that by 1,000. Then raise that to 1 over 5 power. That result is then um, taken and subtract 1 from it. So the first thing I do is take 1,200 future value divided by present value, 1,000. That'll give me 1.2, everything in parentheses first. Now you could use your one to one divided by X key on your, the power key on your calculator. Here's what I do. I take one divided by five, 0.2, okay? So I'm gonna raise that to the 0.2 power. So I'm gonna take the 1.2 from my first calculation of 1,200 divided by 1,000. I'm gonna use a little hi-hat on my calculator. It's in my last column, about the third one down. I'm gonna raise that to the 0.2 power. And my result is 1.03714. Now subtract one from that result. So this in here, resulted in 1.0371374. When I subtract the number one from that result, I get the interest rate, 0 0.03714. Now convert that to a percentage, bring your decimal place, two places to the right, 3.714%. Are there any uh, questions on using your calculator and you're doing the old style math with the formula. Now, see, that's how I used to have to calculate this. You guys that have this finance calculator can use your apps. So I'm hitting my apps button on my calculator. Finance, time value of money solver. My N is five. I, I percentage I'm solving for, so I'm gonna ignore that for now. Now be careful, when you are putting your, inf your um, present value and future value amounts in, one of them must be negative. And it's not you use your minus sign, I don't know if you could see mine, your minus sign, you use the minus sign on the number pad. So I'm going to put present value in as minus 1,000. This has nothing to do with any kind of PMT, so I'm gonna make sure that's zero. And then I'll put the future value in as positive 1,200. So, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this or not. That's what my calculator, it's probably backwards, but that's what my calculator looks like. Now I'm gonna go back up using my arrow keys on my calculator, my arrow keys in here. And then I'm going to solve, which on my calculator is a green alpha, and then enter. And I get the answer directly. So you can use the formula that's manipulated so that it now solves for your interest rate, or you can use your finance um, application. Now, um, I think I mentioned to you the other day that there are apps, uh, free apps, so you can go into your app store. Um, oh, I'm on my calculator. Can't get an app on my calculator. But on your phone, if you go, my in's just app store, and if you enter finance calculator in your search, there's free ones out there. Um, I don't know how to, you know, I don't know all the ins and outs of every single one. Let's see. There's the BA finance calculator, financial calculator. So that's like the BA2 plus the EZ financial calculator. Okay, so um, you could check one of these out if you, if you need to do that, the 10 I financial calculator app. So maybe you would have to pay for some of these, but um, they're out there. So you can always use your phone if you don't have the TI or TI-8384, the 
other type of financial calculators we suggest in the um, syllabus. But also know that if you like formulas, you've got formulas. So this is when we're calculating interest rate. Here's another one. Suppose you are offered an investment that will allow you to double your money in six years. You have $10,000 to invest. What is the implied rate of interest? So you know your present value is $10,000 you know your future value. It's double that. It says you're going to double your money, so $20,000. And you know it'll take six years, so your T is six years. Hi, whoever joined, if you could put yourself on mute, that'd be great. Thank you. Oh, Let's see, who is that? Thank you. Okay. Now, oops, I'm clicking away here. And here we go. So, future value twenty thousand divided by ten thousand. So I'm going to go back to my normal calculator. So we know that's two, right? So inside the parentheses, we get the number two. We're then going to raise that to the one sixth power. Well, one divided by six is 0.16666666667. So I'm gonna take the number two and raise it to the 0.16666667. I'm just gonna round it at that point power and I get 1.122462. Now subtract the number one from that and you get 0.122462, which convert that to a percentage, 12.25%. Again, in your financial calculator, I'm hitting the apps button. I'm in finance, time value of money. Now my N, the number of periods is six. So the formula here uses the letter T as the variable. In your calculator, it's N. I wish they would be the same, but they don't. We're gonna solve for interest. So I'm gonna use my little arrows and go down. Present value, I'm gonna put in as negative 10,000. And it doesn't matter. You could put that one in as positive and the future value in as negative. You'll get the same answer, but one of them has to be negative. And I'm gonna use my arrow keys and now put my future value at 20,000. So in order to double your money in six years, go back up using your arrow keys to the I percentage, alpha, enter. You would need to have it invested in something that has a 12.25% interest rate or return. So you could see how we can define, hey, here's where we're at, here's where we need to be, this is how long we have that we can invest this money. We need to find something that will um, create this situation for us. So what should we invest in? Something that has that kind of interest rate return on our money. Take a look at another one. Suppose you have a one-year-old son and you wanna provide $75,000 in 17 years towards this college education, okay? You have $5,000 to invest right now. Now, before we go any further, if you're sitting there going, oh, why don't you just put a little bit of money away each year? We'll get to that in chapter six. In this chapter, we go, we only have $5,000 we could put away today it needs to sit there for 17 years and we want it to accumulate to 75,000. So we know our present value, 5,000. We know our future value, 75,000. And we know the number of periods it's going to sit there, 17 years. So again, let's just go through that formula one more time. Take your future value of 75,000 divided by 5,000. 
I have 15 as my result. Now I'm going to take 1 divided by 17, which is 0 0.058823529. It keeps going on. I'll round that, but I have to raise that 15 to that power. So 15, raise it to the 0 0.058823529 power. That's where I'm going to stop. My result is 1.172686. Six. So it's off just a little bit, not a big deal. Because in the big realm of things, I'm going to take that result and subtract the number one from it and then round that result to be a percentage or change it to a percentage, I should say. So how much should the interest rate be on the investment if you want to accumulate 5,000 to 75,000 over 17 years? 17.27% annual return or interest rate. So let's take a couple seconds here and you do these. I'll let you, I'll put myself on uh, mute and you try calculating these and I'm going to go over them with the, I'll give you like five minutes. Use either your calculator or that formula. So you are offered the following investments. You can invest 500 today and receive 600 in five years. The investment is considered low risk. Okay. So you want to calculate what kind of interest rate you're earning on that. You can invest the $500 in a bank account paying 4%. So what would that accumulate to? What is the implied interest rate for the first choice? And which investment should you choose? Now we're getting into finance decisions. So see if you can calculate that and come up with an answer. And I'm gonna put myself on mute here and I'll be back in a few minutes. Okay, guys, I'm back. Um, so let's take a look at this. So you can invest $500 today and receive $600 in five years. The investment is considered low risk. So um, let me stop sharing this and go ahead over to my Word document, a Word document, I guess. And let me get a, let me make sure we can see this one. Um, stop sharing. Just bear with me a second. There we go. So if we use our formula, that would be the future value of 600. Oops. So our, our R or our interest rate, I don't want it to be capital. <laughs> well, that should be a, a small R. I'm not fooling around with it now. We could take our future value, which we know we wanted to accumulate to 600, divided by the present value, what we have to invest today, and then raise that whoops, to the one over number of periods, which would be five power. That result is then you subtract one. So um, ooh, my 600, divided by 500 would result in 1.2 to the one divided by five is 0.2 power and then subtract that result from one. So when you do that, you get, whoops, hold on a second, 1.6, sorry, 600. Divide by 500, 1.2, 1.2 to the 0.2 power. Yes, I'm putting stuff wrong in my calculator. It's 1.0371373. Subtract the number one and you get 0 0.0371373. Convert that to a decimal, 3.714%. So the first investment would yield a 3.714% interest rate, which we can see 
is lower than the second investment choice. Now, I'm not going to go flip back to the PowerPoint, but the second investment choice says you have $500 today. So that's your present value. You can invest it for five years. So your T or on your calculator, the N would be five. And the interest rate you can invest it at is 4%. So what is the future value of that investment? So we can go back to our formula that in the beginning of the chapter to calculate future value, and that would be the present value times one plus R to the T power, whoops. Future value then would be the 500 times 1 plus 0.04 to the fifth power, if we're using the formula. So 1.04 to the fifth power gives me 1.21665 times that by the $500 present value. Under these conditions, the investment would increase to 603, 608.33. Now, for those of you using your calculator one more time in your app, the N for your first scenario would be five. You're going to solve for interest rate, so you're going to use your arrow keys. Make sure your present value amount is at 500, either positive or negative, and you make the future value 600 using the opposite sign than your present value. Use your arrows to go back up to the I, make sure your cursor is flashing there, alpha enter, and you get your result of 3.72% or 3.714. Solving for the second one, your N remains at five. Make sure your I is at four, present value, at 500 or negative 500, and then use your arrow keys to go down. Make sure your cursor is flashing near the future value, alpha enter, and you get your result of 608.33. Are there any questions on that? All right, I'm gonna go back to my PowerPoint there we go. Okay, so you should see the PowerPoint again. So we have our answer there. We should choose investment two, that one, the one that yields 4%. Okay, what if instead we need to find the number of periods? So we start with the basic equation and solve for T. So we're gonna change our formula around here and I'm just taking it for what it's worth. It's been a long time since I did more advanced algebra, but you could see why you're doing it now in college, right? <laughs> but future value, remember, is present value times one plus R to the T power or to the number of periods power. So if we wanna solve for T, which is we're raising it here, we need to use some of those crazy algebra functions to convert our formula to do that. So T would be the inverse of the future value divided by present value divided by the inverse of one plus R. Now I learned this the other day because I don't really use these formulas that much anymore. But, and it reminded me, if you're like, what? I N, what's that? It's the log function on your calculator. So my log function is in the first column, one, two, three, four, five, the sixth one down. Let me see if you could see this. Here, where's me? Hold on. There we go. So it's right 
you know, there. I don't know if you could see it. I know it's kind of dark in my room here. Okay, oops. So I'm going to walk you through this. So first we're going to take the future value divided by the present value. So we'll need to know what's it worth in the future. How much are we investing today? Divide that out and find the log of it. We already know the interest rate, so we're gonna add one plus the interest rate and find the log of that. And then we're gonna divide those two numbers together. Okay, or we could use our financial calculator, which is much cleaner. But let's take a look at an example. You want to purchase a new car and you are willing to pay $20,000. You can invest your money at 10% per year and you currently have $15,000 to invest. How long will it take your money to accumulate from 15,000 to 20,000 at that 10% interest rate? So the first thing you wanna do on your normal calculator is take 20,000 divided by 15,000. So I get 1.33333. Now I'm gonna hit the log button and put 1.33333 and I get my answer. I get 0.1249 and I'm gonna round this, I'm gonna put six numbers. So I have 0.124939. Okay, if you wanna use that entire number, great. It'll, the more numbers you use, the more accurate. Then I'm gonna find the log of one plus the interest rate which is 10% or 0.1. So log 1.1 and that results 0 0.04139123. I'm rounding or you could use the entire number. So now you're gonna take the 0.124939 numerator, the log of the 20,000 divided by 15,000 and divided by the log of 1.1, which was the 0 0.041393. And that gives you 3.02 years. So I know that's not, you know, the, um, you're using a lot of different functions on your calculator, but it's doable on a normal calculator that has the ability to compute log. Are there any questions on that for those of us using just our normal average log bare bones calculator? Okay, the good news is for those of us who have the financial calculator, we could go into our apps, our finance, time value of money solver. We're solving for the N or T. N on our calculator is number of periods. We know the interest rate, so put 10. Use your arrow keys to get around. We know the present value, 15,000. So I'm either gonna put my present value or my future value in as negative. Don't forget to do that. So I'm gonna put present value in as negative 15,000. Whoops, too many zeros, 15. And then I'm going to arrow down to my future value, which is 20,000. So I'll put 20,000 in. And then I'm gonna arrow back up to my N, make sure my cursor is active there, it's flashing alpha solve and you get the same result. You could do this calculation in Excel as well, guys. Are there any questions on that? Finding the number of periods it'll take to accumulate a certain amount up to a certain amount given an interest rate. Of course, we'll have a couple practices there. Take a look at this. Suppose you currently have $15,000 and you figure you need to have a 10% down payment plus an additional 5% of the loan amount for closing costs, which closing costs are the um, extra amounts you have to pay when you buy a house. Things like special insurance on the title of the home, um, commissions, to the real estate agent, fees to the bank or for um, to the county to file your new uh, title to the home. 
So there's, there's various fees that are associated with buying a home that are normal. And you estimated here that it'll be 5% of the loan amount that you'll have to pay upfront. Assume the type of house you want will cost about $150,000. And you can earn 7.5% per year on your money. How long will it be before you have enough money for the down payment and closing costs? So let's take a look. Now be careful here. How much do you need in the future is the question. So the down payment, okay, that you're looking for is 10% of 150,000. And if you're going, oh yeah, we already have that. We have 15,000. No, you don't. You have 15,000 to cover the cost of the loan or the the down the 15,000 to cover the down payment plus the closing costs on the loan. So you want to put a down payment of $15,000. We got that. Well, how much are your closing costs are going to be? Well, are you going to borrow 150000 No, because you're going to put 15000 down the day of the loan. That's what you computed because you want to have a 10% of the house value as a down payment. So you're really only going to be borrowing 135000 and we said closing costs are determined on the value of the loan, 5% of the loan. So 5% of 135,000 is how much you will need in addition to your down payment to cover all the costs. So how much will you need in total? $21,750. So how long will it take the amount of money you currently have, present value of 15,000 to accumulate to the future value you will need, $21,750. Now we could use our formula, take the present value, I'm sorry, take the uh, present value, yeah, no, I'm sorry, future value, 21,750, divided by the present value, the amount you're going to put away, 15,000. Take the log of that result. Log, I hit the log button, 1.45, I get, and I'm jotting this down for me, 0.161368, because I can't remember it. Then I'm going to take the log of one plus the interest rate that this will accumulate. And they told us in the previous slide it'll accumulate at 7.5% per year. So the log of 1.075, my denominator result is 0 0.031408, yes. Now divide your numerator result, 0.161368, by your denominator result of 0 0.031408, and you get 5.14 and that's the number of years. Using your finance calculator, I think we, we'll just run through it again. We're solving for N, so just use your arrow key, go down to your I, 7.5. Present value is already at 15,000 in my calculator, but make sure it's 15,000 in yours. Go down to future value, 21,750. That's what we needed to accumulate to using my arrow keys, moving my cursor back up to the N. I'm gonna solve for N and I get 5.14. Are there any questions on that? So you see how this can help you in your everyday life, right? Okay. All right. So, Suppose you want to buy some new furniture for your family room. You currently have $500 and the furniture you want costs $600. If you earn 6%, how long will you have to wait if you don't add any additional money? So take two or three minutes now 
and see what you come up with using either your calculator, your finance function on your calculator, or just using the formula for your calculator. So I'm going to put myself on mute and I'll be back in two or three minutes. Okay, guys, I'm back. Hopefully you were able to work this out. Um, whether you used your finance functions in your calculator or the formula, you should have gotten 3.13 years. So in my finance calculator, I'm solving for N. So my I is six. Present value I put in as the negative 500. Future value, 600. Using my arrow keys, I went up and solved for N not using, just using my regular calculator with the log functions. I took 600 future value divided by 500. That gives me 1.2. I then took the log of 1.2, which gave me 0 0.079.1812. I then took one plus, or I'm sorry, 1.06, the log of 1.06, one plus the interest rate. And I got a log of 0 0.025306. I divided the denominator into the numerator and got the same answer. So 3.13 is your years. Are there any questions on that? Okay, I'm gonna move on. Let me make sure I'm recording. Okay. So let's run through some Excel just to see another way of completing these types of problems. So I'm going to click on the Excel icon and I'll um, stop sharing that and make sure you guys can see my Excel. Okay. So in Excel, if you're interested in using it, you have 15,000 to invest right now and you figure you need 25,000 to buy the car, if you are 9% per year, how long will it take you to buy your car? So NPER is the formula. So N meaning number of periods, NPER period. So that's the formula that you're calculating, the number of periods or in this case, number of years. You would need to know your rate of interest your PMT, which doesn't apply to the calculations we're doing, so you could just leave that blank, present value, and the future value. So I'm gonna come over here, and I'm clicked on there, but you could see up in the formula bar here, NPER, so it's a formula, so you have to use the equal sign, parentheses G5. So the first thing we wanna say is the rate. G5, 9%. The second thing would be zero, PMT. We don't use that in these calculations. G3 would be our present value. And take note, when we put the future value in, it has a negative sign. Now you could have done the opposite. You could have put it in as negative G3 and positive G4. So in our formula bar, we're just referencing the cell. In case we want to change a number in the cell, it's very easy to get a new NPER. You could use the actual numbers as well. And then we close it off and it gives us our number. Okay, let me go up there. So that's how we use it to calculate the number of periods. NPER is your formula. You could also use the rate formula in Excel to calculate the rate. And here are the variables you need here. The rate formula, you would need to know the number of periods, PMT, which doesn't apply here, so you just leave it blank, present value, future value. Now, all of these items are already identified in cells. So G3 is where our present value is housed. G4 is where future value and the number of periods are in G5. So when we do our calculation here, we'll put equal rate because it's our formula, reference the cell that the number of periods is in, G5. The next would be zero. Notice we put comma, zero, comma, then comma, 
G3 to reference the present value cell, and then negative G4 to reference the future value. So whatever values are in those cells will be used to calculate the rate. In this case, it would be 22.47. But let's say you're sitting there going, well, I want to, what, okay, I'm never going to find something that earns a rate of 22.47. Maybe I'm being an, a little unrealistic with how many periods it will take. Maybe I want it to, I could wait five years instead. Watch how your rate changes. Now you just need to uh, find an investment that pays 8.45% interest. So you could see how quickly Excel will recalculate that rate for you. Instead of you sitting here going, one divided by five to the fifth power and everything else, Excel is just that streamlines it really quick for us, even faster than our financial calculator. As long as we set up our formula referencing cells and not the actual numbers. I'm going to. Any questions on that for those of you who like to use Excel? Which I, I think it's not even that you should like to use it. You should just, you need to learn to use it. Because in business, this is all that is used. Especially in accounting and finance. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and back over to our slideshow. And wrap this chapter up. Okay, so there's many different types of financial calculators um, and they are available online. Um, and then they give you an example to work through here. But I, I think we have a comprehensive problem here at the very end that I, I would like you to work on for a few minutes before we finish class. So this is a nice table. It's in your book. It's on page 142. Defining all those symbols we have in our formulas and the formulas for everything we talked about in chapter five. And let's, let's have you take a look at this for five, 10 minutes. You have $10,000 to invest for five years. Okay. How much additional interest will you earn if the investment provides a 5% annual return compared to a 4.5% annual return? That's first. How long will it take your $10,000 to double in value if it earns 5% annually? And then what annual rate has been earned if $1,000 grows into 4,000 in 20 years? So I'll give you like five, 10 minutes here, maybe a little bit in between there, about a little bit after maybe about 9.07, we'll come back and we'll see how you did with that. Are there any questions right now? Okay, I'm gonna put it on pause. Okay, everyone, um, hopefully you finished that up um, and we're gonna take a look. So I'm going to stop sharing this and go ahead back over to Word. to take a look at each one of these. So the present value for each of these calculations is $10,000. The first scenario is compare. If, and by the way, um, well, the N for the first scenario is five years, right? It says, what will the future value be if 5% is the interest rate. Compare it to the future value if 4.5% instead. And then tell us how much additional interest do you earn because you're investing at 5% instead of 4.5%. So the future value for the 5% scenario should have come out to be 12,763. I rounded it. And you could use your calculator um, where your formula would be the present value of 10,000 times one plus the interest rate of 0 0.05, 0 0.05, 
to the fifth power or your finance calculator. For the four and a half percent, you would just substitute four and a half percent as your interest rate and solve for the future value, which should have been 12,462. So the difference in interest, $301. So you earn additional $301 because the investment is in a 5% interest rate vehicle than a 4.5%. Are there any questions on that? Okay. In the second part, it says, how long will it take for your money to double? So how long will it take for it to double from present value of 10,000 to a future value of 20,000 if the interest rate is 5%? I'm pretty sure that's what it was. Yes. Now in your book, they talk about the rule of 72 and that's for scenarios like this. And it, it's used to estimate an interest rate, I think it was, or, or not an interest rate, a um, how long it will take. And I just look, looking at it, it is on page 142. I'm sorry, that's for the interest rate. The rule of 72 is for the interest rate, not for the number of periods. So I'll get to that one, it's next. Um, but for our scenario here, how long will it take to um, accumulate or double? Well, you can use your formula where you would find the log of 20,000 divided by 10,000, and then the log of 1.05 and divide that, or put it into your finance calculator and you should have re um, come up with an answer of 14.21%. 14.21. Any questions on that? or years, I'm sorry, 14.21 years, not percent, I was looking at percent on my paper. Okay, and then in the final scenario, they want to know at what interest rate it will take um, the money to go from 1,000 to 40,000 or to 4,000, assuming 20 years the money is invested. So, you can take your formula where you would take future value divided by present value to the one number of periods power and then subtract that result from one or put the information in your calculator. So again, you could have taken future value, what it's going to accumulate to divided by present value, the 1000 and then raise that result to the one over number of periods power, one over 20. You should have gotten a result of seven, oh, I'm sorry, and then subtract that from the number one. That will give you 7.18%. Now, the rule of seven, any questions on that? On page, bottom of page, uh, top of page 141, it says, first paragraph, the rule of 72 helps us to approximate, yep, yeah, years and interest rate. Okay, so what this is saying is let's say we want to 
um, double our money. Double our money. We want to know how, at what interest rate we should use. Okay, what interest rate? And I'm looking on page 142 at the example there. What interest rate should be used if want to double money in tw in 20 years. Take the number 72 and divide it by the N, in this case, 20 years. And that will give you an approximate interest rate. And that would equal 3.6%. So the rule of 72 helps us approximate information very quickly. But why get an approximate? I just bring it to your attention. Why get an approximate when you can use Excel and get the answer just as quickly or use your finance calculator. Okay, I'm gonna go back to our presentation and I think we're just about done. I, yep, that is our last slide, <laughs> okay. So chapter five, calculating present value of a future amount or the future value of one amount today. Also, today we went over how to determine interest rates in that scenario, what kind of interest rate you need to earn if you want to accumulate money to a certain amount, or how long it will take given an interest rate to accumulate to that amount. Remember in this chapter, the assumption is we make one deposit and we want to know what that one deposit will accumulate to in the future. Now, when we start going into chapter six, which is what we're going to do on Thursday, we're still going to be working on present value and future value, but now we're going to look at it from a different perspective. Now we're going to look at it from, we're going to make more than one deposit or investment. And we're going to do that over a period of time and we're gonna make the same amount deposited at the same time period. And they call that an annuity. So just a little preview of what's coming on Thursday. So I encourage you get all your chapter five requirements done if you can. Um, but remember you have till I think it's April 5th to get them all done. And then make sure you get your smart book um, read through chapter six, get your smart book ready and completed for Thursday morning. And if there's no questions, then I will see you on Thursday. Have a great day and stay healthy, everyone. Questions, questions, questions.